Hi guys, so in this video what we're going to be doing is speaking about cheat days and how they impact you as a footballer, whether it's something you should be looking to include in your nutrition programme or looking to avoid and what the potential consequences of this are as well. Now clearly you probably know that one of the consequences of including cheat days is that you're going to have slightly less control of your diet and it's likely going to impact your body composition to some extent such as probably putting on unnecessary body fat, and that is the main concern. As a nutritionist, one of the first things I look at when working with a football player is their average caloric intake per day and what their requirement is based off you know, their training, their basal metabolic rate, their general daily activity, and you'll come to a sort of figure that this athlete needs 3,000 calories per day on average to support them uh, and support their goals and one of their goals might be to maintain weight as an example. Now let's just take that as an example let's say your average caloric intake needs to be 3,000 calories per day and we'll sort of draw it up onto a board to, to get some sort of visual representation of this so here we have our calories uh, on the left we have the days of the week here uh, at the bottom and as you can see the, the average amount of calories you need per, per day sort of fluctuates depending on the, the, the training demands of that day. But on average, throughout the week, we're going to sit, in this example, at 3,000 calories. So this will be 3,000 as an example, okay? Now, if we include a cheat day, obviously this ideal scenario that we have here to maintain weight, support performance, uh, support training adaptations, whatever it might be, the control of this is going to be affected to some extent. Now, the amount it's affected by incorporating a cheat day obviously depends on how crazy you're going with it and also when you're including it. For example, if you were to include it here on a Sunday when the, your, your caloric requirement and your normal caloric intake is extremely low, and you know, you're consuming a ton of calories instead of this because it's a cheat day. It's going to have a very significant effect on your performance because uh, roughly around one pound of body fat is equal to 3,500 calories. And even if we take the example of an average cheat day, you're over consuming calories by 2,000 for example, you can see how this will roughly or quickly uh, add up as the weeks go by and you know, it only takes a couple of weeks and you've put on one pound of additional body fat, do that every month, two pounds, the, the cycle continues and before you know it, you're quickly uh, overweight and your performance is slacking. So it's definitely something we want to avoid because we lose control of this ideal scenario here. However, it's not the only thing that is of concern. Um, most foods that tend to be incorporated into a cheat day aren't necessarily the highest quality. You're not over consuming on potatoes and um, steaks. I mean, most people tend to have junk foods, cookies, crisps, uh, Domino's pizza, whatever it might be. Um, and these foods tend to be extremely low in their vitamin and mineral content as well. So it's not only the effect it has on body composition that is the um, something that should be taken into account. It's also the fact that our micronutrient composition and overall diet quality is going to reduce and it's probably going to reduce quite significantly. So not only might we put on body fat over time, but we're likely going to affect how our body is functioning. All of these vitamins and minerals are affecting how our body functions. You know, they all have impacts on how all the enzymes and it, they have impacts on how our DNA is uh, being replicated over time. So if you're an elite footballer, it's definitely something that I wouldn't advise. And I think one of the main reasons for this as well is because your diet should probably be sustainable enough on a day-to-day -day basis where you don't have a need to have a cheat day once a week or however often it might be. If you feel like the need to have a cheat day once a week, you probably just want to adapt your diet each day. Do you have 5% or 10% of your diet 
that you can include some of these foods that you enjoy. You know, can you have a chocolate bar every day and still keep control of this ideal situation? Probably yes, and a lot of footballers do this, so I'd go more towards that route. And things come up. You might have a family birthday, it might be your birthday, you might be going out with friends, meal out throughout the week, and these things can't necessarily be planned. So if you're planning for a cheat day on one day, but then you know during the week something else comes up, it's quite easy to then you know suddenly run yourself into two cheat days, and this is definitely going to impact you over time. So I definitely wouldn't plan a cheat day. I just go with the flow. If something comes up, you can slightly lose control of this in moderation, but we want to have as much control over an ideal scenario such as this if we possibly can, um, and that's going to be the best case going forwards. So if you found this helpful, please share it with anyone you think it might help. And if you want to go deeper on topics such as this, I recommend checking out the Match Fit Nutrition Academy. The link's below, and we currently have a deal on there that you won't find on our website, so definitely would check that out. So cheers guys, catch you guys soon.